Hi and welcome to our next, our second tutorial video about fixed assets in Zero. Today we're going to look at how to add a fixed asset in Zero in a little bit more detail than we went over in our overview video. And so there are two main ways to add a fixed asset in Zero. The first one we're going to look at is doing it through the traditional sense from the fixed asset dashboard. And then the second way is going to be through a transaction that is posted to a fixed asset account. So what you want to do is you want to go to your fixed asset dashboard dashboard in your zero um, company and then from there you will click on add a or new asset up in the corner here so you click new asset and then you just fill out everything here so you want to make sure you fill out as much information as um, possible. So as, the more information you have in here, the better it is for when later on you need to either disposal, dispose the asset or maybe you sell the asset. Um, it's easier to differentiate similar, similar assets if you fill out as much as possible. So we're going to add a computer, and it's going to be a Dell XPS 13, a 2016 version. I like to put the year in there because that helps differentiate assets. It auto fills the asset number, but if you want it to be different, feel free to change that. Um, you have your purchase, purchase, your purchase, purchase date. I had a real time, hard time saying that. Um, so put that in at whatever date you want that to be, whenever it was purchased. That is not necessarily the depreciation date when that starts. The purchase price. Um, if there is a warranty, put in when it expires, and then the serial number. I'm going to just type in, you know, some fake one, and this will help us also um, differentiate the different assets when you're going through the disposal or sell process. And then you'll want to select your asset type. Um, zero automatically class has two set up in there, generally, but um, we'll show in another video how to tweak those asset types. And then if you have track and categories, this one has one set up as region, this demo company does. And so you want to go ahead and select that as well. So it'll, it'll attach the depreciation when you run it to that region. And then you want to go in there and put any descriptions or deep in additional details about the asset. So maybe this computer was purchased specifically for a John Smith. So we're going to put him in here as the, the uh, who it was purchased for. Apparently I have insert on. Let's turn that back. There we go. Alright, and then you want to scroll scroll down. And then this bottom portion of the web page, which isn't scrolling down. There we go. Is all about depreciation. Now all of this is attached to this asset type up here. So when you fill in the asset type, it pre-fills this information. You can change that as well. So if you don't want the start date for depreciation to be September 1st, maybe you want it to be a couple months later because you're not actually going to use the asset until then, then you can change that. You can also change the depreciation method if you want. You can change it from average um, from days to months. And you can also change it from a rate to years. And I like years better. But like I said, this is all attached to the asset type. So this is going to all change based on that. And then you hit register and you're all done. And that will put your asset in the list of registered assets. And as you can tell, I put one, another one in similar 2014, but this one is the recent one we put in here. And so now it will be in there for when we run depreciation. And we'll show you how to do that in a different video. So let's go on to the second method of adding an asset to zero. For this, we're going to go to the bank account. Um, I like to easily access that from the dashboard. Go in here and we're going to just do a simple transaction. And the thing with this is you make sure you post it to the fixed asset account. And we'll run through what that what happens with that here. So let's create another spend money new spend money transaction. All right. So from Best Buy, we purchased a laptop on September 10th, and it is another Dell XPS 13, but this is a 2017 version, and this is for Susan, and that is $1,700, and this is where you need to make sure you post it to the fixed asset account for computers. 
So there's the fixed asset account, computers and equip, uh, computer equipment. And then you can also put the region, region and then hit save. So what that does is if we go back over to our fixed assets, Now you can see that the recent one we put in for Susan is here. So here's your asset that we just put in the Dell Xperia 13 2017 for Susan in here and as a, def a draft asset. So that's really nice that it puts it in as, dra as a draft asset from a county perspective because it makes it a lot easier to reconcile your what you have in your fixed asset ledger to your balance sheet. So it automatically shows up there, and there's another report we'll go over later on that um, helps you reconcile it as well. But having that there is very nice. So now all you have to do is go in here, and I would just quick update the name, remove four, four students in there, put it in the bottom here. And then you'll need to add um, warranty, serial number, and then, of course, the asset type. And as you can see, region's already filled in. So the majority of it data is filled in from that transaction. And up here on the upper right hand corner you can see original transaction. You can click there and see the original transaction that created that. And then you can scroll down and see that everything's brought in except for when you want to start depreciation. And so we'll start depreciating depreciation at the end of the month and then you're good to go and you can hit register. The other thing I'll point out real quick is at the bottom of the page here So at the bottom of the page here, you can see here that it has the details of who created it, when it was created, and then you can add notes. And that's something nice about all transactions and zeros. At the bottom, you can see history. You can see anything that's changed or anything like that. So we'll go ahead and register this asset. And now we have that new asset we added the traditional way here. And then we have the one right here that we added just recently. So that's a quick how to add an asset in zero. Um, let us know if you have any questions in the comments below or send us an email at info at wallstoneadvisoryfirm.com. Um, like the video if you liked it and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks.